Hey there. So I'm uh, working on an RFID reader here and I thought I would just record while I work on it. Might be of interest to someone. I uh, suspect it'll be of interest to uh, Club Siberia here as is going on their door. So, so I thought I'd go over what I got here as uh, Arduino uh, compatible board called a Menta from Adafruit and uh, so adafruit.com slash Menta which fits inside of uh, a Mint 10. I got a shield for it as well. I'm not sure that the shield is going to fit inside the Mint 10 so I may need to put in a different enclosure but this uh, Shield is a SD card shield. I built both of these. They were kits. I did not record building them. I didn't think it would be relevant at the time, but in hindsight, I suppose maybe it would have been interesting to someone. Uh, this is uh, Adafruit's log shield here. Both of these have some simple breadboard area on them to uh, put other circuitry. Um, this unit will be inside, obviously, locked in the room somewhere. And uh, this is the RFID module here. This is a 13.56 megahertz MyFair module. And uh, so you've got the chip there and another chip there. And uh, fairly standard form factor for these RFID modules. This is a SparkFun RFID evaluation board. I originally wasn't going to use this, but I decided maybe it would be a better idea to just go ahead and use this. I was going to make my own antenna and things like that, and I just ran out of time. I really need to get this together. So, this, you've got an RFID antenna on the front. This is the parts go on this side, so this is facing outward. All right, so I'm thinking about making an enclosure and just exposing this outside. You know, we could put a club logo on it or something here. Whatever. But that way the antenna is exposed. You can sort of see that it's, you know, a circuit board. And uh, just the RFID reader modules here, all the brains are inside the room. I also have a keypad. You know, possibly could mount that here if I wanted to, really. And uh, that will be for entering a pen code, running through the uh, settings, whatever. And uh, here I have. to be kind of gentle with this. This is somewhat fragile. Um, driver chip there, buffer uh, level converter actually. This converts uh, to the voltage required to run this, which is an OLED, organic LED display. And uh, it's blue, I believe. So I'm going to see if I could put this here. It may interfere with the reader, so I may not be able to put that there. But I'm going to try. We shall see how that works out. And uh, so if it all works the way I'd like, we'll have something kind of like this. you know, mounted in a box, whatever. <clears throat> but before we get into mounting it, I would like to make sure it all works, obviously. 
it's no good if it doesn't work. So one of the first things I'm going to have to do is put some headers on this to uh, mount this on, which I happen to have right here. These are pretty typical uh, 0.1 inch headers. Just take a pair of nippers and cut these to length. You even stick it on the board so you know where to cut. So you want to cut the, right through the middle of the next pin after the one you want. Then sometimes it'll fly across the room. Just trim it off nice. And uh, do the same with the second one. Just cut through the pen adjacent to the one where you want. I'd suggest wearing safety glasses and making sure you're not aiming at people when you do that. And uh, this is the back side of the board. You can tell because there's a ground plane on the antenna here. And all the labels and buttons and things are on the back. And it goes valid question where one is. Oh, right there. Oh yeah. There's one. to just tape this temporarily. Just tape across that just to hold it in place until I get it soldered. to where all the holes are away from the vise. I'll go digging for the leftovers of that later. So I got a spool of solder right here on the, uh, a spool actually. I got a spindle in my tool wall here. And, uh, So, there's a lot of ways you could solder this. Um, one of the most important things you need to do here, aside from detangling the iron, is to clean the tip. Good. Make sure you got a shiny tip. So, can't see that very well, but... Uh, you know, there's several ways you can do this. I would suggest if you're new to this sort of thing that you uh, are very careful with your soldering and put the, you know, with the point of the tip to touch the pad and the uh, pen simultaneously. Let it sit for about a second or so and then touch the solder to the opposite side like that and uh, leave the iron on for maybe a second afterwards if you're not very confident but don't leave it on more than that or you'll burn the pad off the board but uh, I'm going to go faster than that if I can here So we've got our RFID module mounted here. We'll take the module off. And now, by doing it that way, you've got perfect headers. They're absolutely straight. You know, in an assembly line, you'd have a jig or something. It's just a flat board with a um, the mating connector on it. Like this. 
you just have a small board like that to uh, align them, but, you know, since this is a board itself, it's fairly safe to do that with. I would not do that with a chip. This is something I had uh, rigged up as magnetic contacts, so I'm just going to steal this wire here. So one magnet's one contact, one magnet's the other. This was for powering a uh, unipolar motor. I'm going to need to split that in half. I have some different kinds here. But uh, since I need two singles, and I don't have any single in here, I'm going to split that in half. And the reason I got this was in my uh, drawer of these type of connectors, these header connectors, is the tool that removes those. So you uh, stick this pen under the lock and then pull the pen free and now see it doesn't damage it. If you try to use anything but this tool it tends to destroy the plastic. And speaking of destroying the plastic, I'm going to do like I did with the header and cut between these two. And then, uh, so I've cut through the center pin and split it into two singles. You can buy singles, they're cheap. I don't have any, and I'm not going to wait three days to get any. I have already ordered some, though, for other purposes. Um, and I have some short ones. I think I've shown in a video before uh, these these type of things. Adafruit makes these, and they put that singles of that type of connector on it. And then if you want to make you know a three pin plug, you just uh, take a, a drop of epoxy, plug these all together, and put a drop of epoxy between them. So quick way to make a pen header out of singles so you could buy a thousand singles and make them any size you want. So I'm going to tend this. So tending wire is a pain, but you can spin the uh, solder around something, whatever, a post, whatever you got handy. And uh, tend it again. Soldering iron goes on one side of the wire, and the solder, once the wire is hot, the solder goes on the other. So you don't want the iron to touch the solder, other than the tenant. The iron should be touching the wire, and then the wire touches the solder. Nip the ends of that off just a hair so I don't have any problems getting it through the holes. <coughs> TX is going to be green. Here, slip this back again. This device has a groove, a slot cut into it, which is a, a standard circuit board depth. So the clamp isn't putting any pressure on this board, really. I mean, I could, well, it's putting a little pressure on it, but not enough that it flexes the board. You don't want to do that. So I do want to flip this over, though, don't I? So I'm soldering the side that's visible. And uh, of course that requires remembering which one's eight and which one's seven. Eight is TX and seven is RX. Now, to hold this in place, oops, 
that was a magnet. Magnet stick to metal, go figure. It's an important thing to keep in mind. So I'm going to use the helping hands here to uh, hold the wire in place while I solder it. Again, important to uh, clean the iron before you touch anything with it. Every time. Don't use the iron without cleaning it before you make a connection. All right. So there we go. Wire dangling off the board. So this is some signal wire here that comes out of a. It's an alarm cable. It was four wires. Already used the black. Some of these are red and green for power. This is not a great idea, but I'm not going to tend these ahead of time because there is no tolerance for it on this power wire that I've chosen. I don't recommend that, but um, it will work fine. The solder will wick through. <clears throat> but you have to make sure that it does. That's the key. take a little longer to heat up. Now you're probably asking, well, what am I going to do about power on this side? Well, you don't want to, um, you know, your power dangling out as it is, as it were. So I'm actually going to take, I've got these extra long headers here. And um, since I don't have any of these, and these, strictly speaking, aren't appropriate for a power connection. You want the reverse of this. Um, you never, ever, ever put a power bus on a pin, pins like this because it uh, obviously could short. So what you want to do is you want your power bus on uh, female side, which is the way the Arduino is set up. It actually has all the pins like that for a reason, for that reason I am certain. So I'm going to uh, use this as an end connector. Okay, so this extra long header is going to have these two wires connected to it and it's going to end up being a plug on the end of the cable to make a power cable. Uh, these are longer than... You see I've got two different sizes of header here. So, this is strictly a job for the helping hands. And I'm going to get rid of this magnifying glass because I keep nearly cutting my finger on it. the edge of that's a little sharp. Serrated almost, I don't know why. So this is from Radio Shack here. These are like 15 bucks or so, maybe less than that. I don't remember. Well, yeah, got to tighten the screw. All right, so um, two things. I'll unwind these a little bit. Um, you're going to want heat shrink on each individual wire. As well, you're going to want heat shrink on them as a whole to make a connector. So um, I don't have a heat gun handy right at the moment. I, uh, I will have one soon here at the bench. So this is heat shrink tubing. I don't remember if I got this from Adafruit or SparkFun, but they have um, some handy an assortment pack. It's cheap. It's very useful. So this will go on an individual wire. It's almost too big, but I think it'll shrink down. And then the, the next size up. One more size from that. Maybe two sizes up. 
is this, and I don't know if that's too big or not. I may have to go another step. So let's see here. I'll do that. I'll make it so I got two of these inside this bigger one. And then what I'll do is I'll slip the bigger one over these two wires, both wires. And then uh, look at the length of the header here and go about double the length of the pin and cut a length of that and then cut another one exactly the same. And then slip those over the individual wires and get them well away from the tip so they don't shrink down on you before you expect them to. All right, so the last thing you want to do is have them shrink while you're soldering. So you've got uh, the larger one here over both wires. And then I'm going to do a third over all of those, which is going to form the full connector and make it rigid. So that one's going to be about an inch. All right, so three pieces of heat shrink. Maybe that seems excessive. Maybe it is. Whatever. Stuff's cheap. So I'm going to put this third piece, I'm not going to leave it off right now, but I will put it over the uh, over this. Okay. So strip about three sixteenths of an inch off of each of those. And uh, Again, I'm not going to bother tinning this just because of the uh, tight space. I'm just going to loop this around. One loop around the header. Make sure you get the uh, the loop straight, by the way. You want it as parallel with the pin as possible so your heat shrink will fit over it. And also put this clip, the alligator clip, put it on the pin that you're soldering to act as a heat sink so you don't melt your plastic separator. <clears throat> and then come around under it, heat the wire itself. Wait a second. And then there you go. Press the wire up against the pen, and then heat, hold, heat the wire, pressing the wire against the pen, and then touch the solder to the wire, not the iron. And you'll get a perfect connection pretty quick. And uh, let it cool off. Again, you don't want to accidentally melt your plastic here. And same thing here with this one, the negative power lead, give it a good loop around the pin, clamp that wire in there, and then make sure you don't get them too close or they might bridge. Slaughter's pretty good about not bridging, but uh, you know you can bend it just a hair, but not too much. You don't want to break it. You don't want to break loose the pen from the uh, from the plastic. And again, I've clipped the pen I'm soldering. So come over here, heat the wire. And just, you know, you have half a second on this or you start melting the plastic even with this clip. See, this clip's hot. So, all right. Leave it just for a moment of heat. Yeah, it's already cooled off. Good. So, 
There you go. You got that. And then you just run these up and uh, guide them over the pins like this. I have to finagle it there a little close. All right, so you've got the uh, heat shrink insulating the two wires. And then you uh, need a torch or a hot air gun. A torch works if you're careful. So you want to shrink. That completely around that, so now the wires are tightly separated, you know, insulated well. And then, remember this piece back here, we put over both wires, give it a little squeeze, and now it will mostly, not completely, but it'll pull the two wires together and tie the, the two pieces of heat shrink together. You can't see it very well, but sorry about that. All right, so you've got the heat shrink, the small heat shrink on the individual wires up here at the uh, connector. And then this piece back here is just pulling the two wires together. It's just barely overlapping the heat shrink on the individual wires. All right, so now we want to shrink that and I suggest that you make sure that the wire is flat so you got your color code straight right so you don't rotate these like this so you've got it twisted because now you can't tell what color the pin is so you want to know that this pin is red and the other one's green so keep those from twisting while you're shrinking that still a little bit twisting even though I didn't want it to. Not bad. So there's that. And then there's the third piece which fits over the end here. And hopefully it'll let us tie these two together. I don't know if it'll shrink enough, but it should. Torch shut down here at over temperature. This is meant for lighting cigarettes, not melting things, but it works. So there, you've got that. So now I got a power plug that will. Uh, plug into the Arduino. All right, so now you're asking this side, what am I gonna do here? These don't fit. Correct. So I'm gonna cut one of the breakaway extra long headers. Here. And again, I could have made this connection like this one, but It's uh, not worth the hassle. So now I can plug these uh, plug these extra long headers in like that and get uh, basically the same type of arrangement here. So I've got like that. Hmm. Looks like 
reader's not working. So the problem here is likely that this uh, RFID module has got the wrong firmware in it. I had set it up for I2C, and well, this shield doesn't use I2C, so obviously that's a problem. <clears throat> so I need to switch it back to the UART firmware, which we can do here by uh, running the firmware update utility. And uh, selecting this firmware, which is a standard single device UART, and select auto upgrade. And I've got it, uh, I made a breakout board here for it previously that I was using with the I2C bus that has the antenna port over here and it has the USB programming interface over here for an FTDI. Then that's the I2C port. So our upgrade is complete. Now we can close that and run the uh, utility here and open up board hardware commands read firmware. So now we're running 1.3D instead of the I2C firmware. So there you go. Let's see if that helped. Okay, let's start up the logic analyzer. And then uh, I've got these labeled here, the uh, two wires going to the RX and TX lines from RFID and to RFID. So Arduino is sending data to the RFID module and then receiving data back. So I've got uh, it set up for asynchronous here. And uh, let's switch it to decimal. And I think the uh, labels are backwards there, but we'll fix that in a minute. So let's start collecting data. And then you can see the light there blinking when I put the card up against it. And we can just stop that. I've got enough samples. So we're in async serial mode, and yeah, our labels are wrong here. Easy to get confused with TX and RX lines, because, you know, which direction are you talking about? You know, because TX is RX on some other device. So you see here that uh, it says we are sending to the device 255.01. 130, 131, which is the seek command. Incidentally, we can verify that in our code here. You see, this is the seek, and it's sending 255, 0, 1, 130, 131, and then delay. So, there is that. So we should get a response back when we put the card up against it, and as you can see, we do. The RFID module is returning 255.02.130.76.208. All right, very good. So, finally, everything's working. We have a working RFID reader, yay. Now, we just need firmware to make it do something. Okay, so I've mounted a, uh, a MOS set here on the Minta. This is going to be driving the uh, uh, door striker to bring unlock the door, basically. So i put it on three of these bus lines here, and I've tacked the uh, tab down to the other opposite bus lines. That way it doesn't interfere with the shield. And then... Uh, <coughs> Got a little bit of a uh, current sink here, 
which is uh, just a MOSFET and uh, some circuitry to turn it on and uh, protect it a little bit. So something you might use for any 12 volt circuit turning anything on uh, from a microcontroller. Just uh, allows you to connect the uh, negative lead off of a 12 volt device through the MOSFET to ground to turn it on. So, very simple current sink. So, I'm debating on what to do with this connector because if I put a vertical header here, then uh, I might have trouble. Uh, the shield obviously so say this is the plug for that connector and then if I try to plug my shield in does it fit? Well turns out it does. So perhaps that is fine. Is it worth trying to find a right angle header? Maybe not. Will I try to find one? Why not? So, the question here is do I have any right angle ones? Yeah, I do. So, do I have any nice right angle ones? To the key? No. But I do have some right angle. 0.1 inch cutters here. Lots. So, again, these are breakaways. So, well, these aren't quite breakaways, but they're cutaways. I can cut myself a nice right angle header there. And then, uh, You know, this is going in a mint pen, so I also have to bear in mind that it needs to fit that. So, what I can do here is You know, put it sideways. It'll fit under the uh, shield now, so I can just uh, do that. But it's by far the best option is to put it under the shield. Now the key here is how do you hold this while you're soldering it, right? Again, come back to the helping hands here. Because you really kind of want to get this straight. Get it nice and square with the uh, board. No pressure, by the way. And again, just touching on one side. I'm going to run this down the back side of the power jack, like so. Just sort of wrap it to uh, hold it for right now. Yeah, well, that didn't work. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to solder it right to the power jack. Trim it, and well, we've got whatever the input voltage is here going to our MOSFET. So this regulator <clears throat> right here will handle up to like 30 volts input, by the way. Um, 
I wouldn't recommend it because it doesn't have a heat sink on it. So you might want to stick to like less than 15. Unless you put a heat sink on it. All right, and then the, the 12 volts here is going straight to this jack. We're not using the 12 volts for anything in this circuit at all. It'll simply be looped back to ground through the MOSFET and the uh, door lock switch. Okay, I've tacked it down here. And uh, I'm not going to cut it off just yet. I want to fold it back over and sort of uh, bridge it up against there because I want to bridge, use the extra length of wire to bridge it to the pin on the plug. Just like that. And, uh, Take your nippers and clean it up a little bit. All right. Now, the center pin is going to be ground. Now, if you're following along, you'll probably realize why I did that. That way the, uh, the ground connection is the only thing connected to anything in this circuit. So if you plug this in backwards, it'll either not work or it will go to uh, the correct connections. Because the center pin is always going to be ground. And uh, that's one reason sort of to use a, uh, a three pin plug like this on a two pin circuit. You know, you can make it unambiguous. It's easy to plug a two-pin plug in backwards, but a three-pin plug is less easy to plug in backwards. If that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm going to build up this whole circuit here. I cannot wait to get my new soldering irons. The uh, heating element here is falling out. It's annoying, but the soldering iron is from the 60s, so I can't quite blame it for being a little worn out. I'm going to make a little uh, jumper here out of one of the discarded leads. And that jumper is going to tie the MOSFET over to uh, the ground bus. Okay. So there we have it. A finished circuit. So all we need to do is put a high current 12 volt source on this power jack. And uh, We'll be able to in theory control this thing from that. Now, I say in theory because there's always the possibility that the uh, door lock mechanism will draw so much current that it reboots the microcontroller. We won't know that till later. So Sometimes more power isn't always better, but that's one of the reasons I've got the power coming straight off of the uh, jack and not going through any circuitry. That way there's a less chance of it dropping voltage. And it has quite a way to, ways to drop in order to drop out of the 7805, as long as it's above 7 volts. 7805 ought to be just happy. So I've got the hardware working now. I need to work on the software a bit, but uh, just the basic reader is uh, going. I haven't built the keypad or the display yet, but uh, 
the uh, reader is working. As you can see, if I place a card near it, the uh, found indicator blinks. And uh, that's basically all it does right at the moment. And um, so Wes over at Club Siberia built and designed and made a uh, box here out of PLA that fits the dimensions of the reader. So with a little bit of a gap here, we're going to try to devise a light pipe to uh, display the LEDs. Just bend them around the corner of the box a little bit. But, um, yeah, so you can't really see the found LED there, the way that's oriented, but, uh, anyway, it's a neat little box, and, uh, we'll probably, uh, display it like this in the door, even, just so it's, uh, obvious there's nothing you can hack on this box to get in the door. You'd still need a, uh, a valid tag and a pin code to unlock the door. And the unlock mechanism is on the inside, so. But, uh, you know, it kind of fits, I think, having all this exposed. I'll probably, we discussed either putting uh, plexiglass or some sort of clear plastic over this side, and we may still do that just so the electrical connections aren't exposed. But uh, that's about it. The uh, keypad will probably be another box that uh, is above or below it. I'm not sure yet. But uh, that way we can use it for other things, potentially. And uh, I suspect we'll probably have a couple different types of RFID readers at some point as well. Uh, this is also good for NFC, so, you know, we may do that as well. Um, at the very least, I'm going to have uh, a uh, Foursquare NFC tag near this, um, by the door above it, something like that. Far enough away it doesn't interfere, but close enough it's obvious. You know, you could take your phone and tap your phone against it. But, uh, it's a nice little box. And, uh, this took a couple hours to print this box. And it's made out of PLA, which is, uh, corn. So, it's a polylactic acid. It's not, uh, not a traditional plastic, it's a, uh, it looks like plastic and feels like plastic, but, uh, you know, a lot of people don't even consider it plastic because it's corn. You can't recycle it, for example, like plastic or anything like that, and if you mix it in with plastics recycling, you end up tainting the plastic and uh, maybe even preventing it from being able to be recycled. This goes into a compost heap actually, and it will biodegrade in a compost heap fairly rapidly. So that's neat stuff. This was printed on a uh, Mendel Max uh, 3D printer. It took a, maybe an hour, two hours, I lost track of time. But um, he spent a little bit of time designing it in uh, Google SketchUp and then printed it out. So, thanks to Wes for that. Um, hopefully, uh, we can talk him into doing the same for uh, the keypad and uh, display box. So, um, the rest of this is software for the most part. I'll come back after I've got the RFID software written, and I'll work on the display and keypad. And uh, that will be sort of an add-on to where this can function without it, but we can add it on. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Mm -hmm.